Hey guys, I'm Brad Palumbo and welcome back to Brad vs. the Internet, my series where I react to some of the craziest and funniest videos I've come across on the internet over the last week. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Consider sticking around, maybe even subscribing. Really hoping to hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube before the new year. Uh, but buckle up and enjoy and comment and like if you enjoy some of the videos I'm about to show you. But We've got some doozies coming up. Up first, the internet is making fun of this woman spotted in the gym, and I don't like it. All right, so the sound effects are meant to be funny, and I guess they're a little funny, but on the whole, this video is really messed up and I don't like it at all. It was posted to the Twitter account clown world which posts videos making fun of people and tons of people on twitter were dogpiling on this woman i think that's horrible and actually gets it totally backwards she should be applauded and celebrated for going to the gym and putting in the work and let me tell you when you are an overweight person it is not easy your body hurts your body resists you and you have that social stigma that fear of being judged or being laughed at or being recorded and mocked like this. To be clear, she probably shouldn't do things like box jumps like she does here until she improves her mobility. There are simpler and more basic exercises she can start with. But that's a good reason for somebody with some fitness knowledge to offer her some advice or help, not to make fun of her or deride her. This pisses me off especially because I'm one of the many people who's criticized and pushed back on the body positivity movement and the healthy at any size movement for the toxic anti-science, anti-health cults that they are. But if we're going to encourage people to reject that nonsense and live healthy lives, then we need to celebrate them when they make efforts not make fun of them. I hope that she keeps on keeping on and that her haters grow up. Up next, I'm just astounded how ratchet some of y'all are. This is one of the worst things somebody's probably ever done to me while street performing. This is such disgusting and classless behavior that I hardly know where to begin. But I want to talk about the friends in the back who are apparently laughing as if this is funny. Y'all really need to get your morals straight because I can tell you right now, if I saw one of my friends doing this, they're not my friend for much longer. In fact, I'm probably reporting them to the police. The thing is, society really, really, really needs to bring back an intense stigma for stealing. This is so out of control that in some cities, including Washington DC where I used to live, CVS is now locking up the toothpaste. We need law enforcement to crack down on stealing, yes, but part of it's cultural. Some young people seem to think that this kind of behavior is funny or cool, when in fact it is ratchet, disgraceful, disgusting, socially harmful, and destructive. Speaking of Gen Z, let me know how many of these Gen Z slang terms you're aware of. So how have the vibes been lately? Low-key, off, go off, King. I just feel like life's been mad cringe lately. Like instead of taking W's, I'm taking L's. And how's your Riz? <laughs> Mid, no cap, on God. Hmm. It's giving depression. <laughs> dead ass, dead ass. Facts, that's facts. No printer, period. Okay, so let me know in the comments real quick how many of these terms you'd previously heard of before this video and how many of them do you actually know the definition to? Do you understand? I actually knew all of them and I'm a little bit impressed with myself, but maybe I shouldn't be because I am technically on Gen Z. I'm on the upper edge of it, like almost millennial, but I also do spend a lot of time on the internet for you for your entertainment pleasure. I suffer. You're welcome. That said, this video did make me feel <laughs> kind of old. And I will say this for Gen Z. I roast Gen Z a lot and it's got a whole lot of problems, but they do have a good sense of humor sometimes and they make a lot of entertaining content like this. Up next, this video honestly made my heart warm. Wait, you got a 1510. Yeah, I did better than last. You did better than 1510? <laughs> yeah. You did better than 1510? That's what I was expecting. 
But still, 1510 is so good. And you did better? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's not like she got like a... All right, hit me. 1590. No way! No way! Are you kidding me? You're not kidding me! I love this so much. Like, I don't know, it just made me smile. And there's so much toxicity and negativity out there on the internet that I wanted to share something positive and good for once. It also hit a little bit home for me because when I was in high school, I lived with my dad and my stepmom in, frankly, a pretty abusive situation. But my academic achievements were not supported. I was actually derided and made fun of for how much I cared about school and how hard I worked. So it's great to see another reminder of how many good and caring parents there are out there. And I do have to shout out the Asian community here just for a minute. I know I'm generalizing a little bit here, but it really does seem like like Asian families prioritize education and hard work in a special way. And I think that's a wonderful thing. But actually, under systems of affirmative action that we have in this country, they're punished for it. Just look at Harvard, for example. With all the same scores and resume, an Asian American who was applying to Harvard before the recent Supreme Court decision that might have changed some things, but before that, they would have had a 25% admission chance to Harvard if they were Asian, yet somebody with the same exact scores would have a 75% chance of Hispanic and a 95% chance of Black. The average Asian American admitted to Harvard had to have a 120 point higher score than Black people who were admitted and 50 points higher than whites. That's so wrong. People like this wonderful family shouldn't be discriminated against in the name of progress. Next up, this video, honestly, it made me tear up a little. I'm not gonna lie. The first time I saw it, I did tear up a little. Happy birthday, dear Abraham. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> So in the caption, they explain that it's the first time he's ever had a birthday cake. I can't. I'm sorry. This one, it made me tear up. It really did. I think this is just beautiful. And so much of the content on the internet that goes viral is negative or toxic in some way. But sometimes you have these happy stories that actually get views and get attention. And I'm just so happy to see that kind of thing bubbling up to the top. And I want to share it with you. Adoption is really is a beautiful thing. And shout out to y'all who adopt, honestly. I know it's not just them, but I do also want to shout out the Christian community because I have noticed a trend of Christian families families uh, having kids, you know, naturally, and then later adding to their families through adoption in a way they, they don't have to at all. And I think that's a wonderful thing. And I've seen them grow their families and give amazing opportunities to people who wouldn't have had them. And 
I just think it's a wonderful thing and that people should consider it more often. All right, guys, that's it for my take on the internet this week. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Drop a like on this video and consider subscribing to this page if you enjoyed the video. And with that, I'll see you all next time. But if you're not sick of me and you want more Brad vs. the Internet content, you can go here or here to check out the other videos I've done that are very similar to this one.